mediating trust and influence in human robot interaction via explainable AI. Just to give the overview of the today's presentation, I'll be starting with my introduction and talk about a little bit about my research and how it guides towards the literature review, then talk about in detail about an algorithm which I have prepared for you guys and my current work and the work I'll be doing in the future. So a little bit about myself when I was missed my journey at CU. So I joined Cairo Lab in the summer of spring 2018 as a master's student published my first conference paper, which was nominated for Best Paper Award in South Korea, Daegu. And I was selected as HRI Pioneers. I've been working as a program chair for the Pioneers for the last two years. Uh, next two years, I joined PhD program at CS, uh, completed my coursework requirements. I wrote a survey paper, a paper on mental models in human robot teaming. And most of the literature today is from the same paper. And I did this in collaboration with Matt and I submitted a conference paper and a journal paper, both are under review right now. And in the spring 2020, I was selected as a Avtar Teji Singh Graduate Fellowship. Going into the research of my talk, so consider this role life cycle. We are good at this transition of turning a novice robot into a capable robot, but we are not good or we are not, uh, there hasn't been much done to turn a capable robot into a competent instructor. So my research looks, in, uh, looks at how to turn a robot into a competent instructor. Specifically, I look into scenarios where there is a mismatch in human and robot belief that leads to a failure or suboptimal performance. And I teach people by correcting their faulty understanding of the world using natural language or explanation. For example, let's take, uh, let's take this uh, case in which a person is trying to find the exit in the burning building. If you see him walking towards an exit with a fire, which is shown in the red line, we can assume that they don't know about the fire and has a suboptimal policy. So we can elicit a desired policy or correct the behavior using a natural language by telling them there is a bad reward in the central hallway or there is a fire. And with that, we can correct their suboptimal behavior. So if we break down that process, we can look into in three components. So for making a competent instructor, first is robot has to figure out what human is thinking based on his understanding of the world. Second, uh, it has to figure out what corrective guidance it has to issue to correct the human's world point of view. And third, it has to communicate that information effectively so that they can be an effective, trustworthy and explainable coaches. So my literature review is basically based on these three questions. So first, I'll be talking about how we can model the behavior of the human. And second, using that, how can we leverage explainable AI to create more shared awareness? And third is how can we use uh, the insights from social science and HRI to effectively communicate this information back to the human? So going into mental models in human robot teaming. So mental models are organized knowledge structures that allow individual to interact with their environment. Mental models serve the crucial purpose of helping people to describe, explain, or predict events in the environment. So why mental models are important in the teams or human robot teams are they are very crucial for the teamwork. They help in the fluency between the teams. They also help in the adaptability. For example, if there is some unforeseen situation happen, if there is a shared mental model between the teams, they, it would help them in adaptation, explainability, team trust, and also to have an effective communication between the teams. And I initially mentioned that there would be some mismatch between the mental models of human and robot. What are the reasons for it? So one of the reasons might be they may have a different expectations of the capabilities of each other. They may be operating in a different state of the world or different representation. They may have a different goal or different sensor model on which they are base basing their decision on. So going into the different mental models. So first is the first order mental model, which is also known as the standard mental model, which looks into modeling or inferring the belief or intention or goal of the person which we are trying to collaborate for the purpose of predicting their action. So how do we get the first order mental model from the human? So this step can be broken down into two steps. First is trying to infer the human's reward function. What I mean by the human's reward function is their knowledge of what is good or what is bad. Second is once we figure out what the human's reward function is or the utility function is, we have to plan that 
to a behavior which they would elicit or how will they plan according to that uh, utility function. So one of the simplest method is based on the principle of rationality, which can be used to infer the human's reward function. So basically we will assume that human is a rational person, that is they will take an action that will maximize their reward function. So which can be basically said that they would run towards a positive reward and run away from the punishment or anything which is going to harm them. So one of the methods which incorporates the principle of rationality is inverse reinforcement learning, specifically maximum entropy inverse reinforcement learning. So in this case, a robot has the initial belief of the policy what human has. And as the human demonstrations or human observation comes into the picture, so robot uh, exponentially weighs those actions more than the unobserved action. With that, it is able to calculate the reward function or the utility function and then model it back to the behavior which a uh, human exhibit. So another behavior or one of the, like going into the second part of the thing, like once we have the reward function, how do we, how do we infer the behavior of the human? So one of the most uh, widely used method is Boltzmann rational model or also known as noisy rational model, which was given by Osogami and Otsuka. So before we go into that, first we need to know a little bit on like what is the rational model, which I initially explained. So in this case, basically in a rational model for each state, there is a perfect action. So in this graph, you can see there is a spike in probability because a human knows what is the perfect action. But whereas in Boltzmann rational model, we model it as a Boltzmann distribution. Basically, there is a noise which is uh, laid on into it. So which is factored in as this theta variable, basically when theta reaches towards the infinity, human always picks the rational, uh, rational action. Whereas if theta goes towards the zero, basically human actions are pretty much random. So for now, we've been talking about assuming human to be a rational person, but humans frequently deviate from the rational behavior due to specific biases like time pressure, loss aversion, et cetera. They're also limited in cognitive capacity, which leads to forgetfulness, limited planning, horizon, and false beliefs. So one of the model by Stefanos Nicolaidis and others looks into the bonded memory adaptation model, which basically models humans at bonded rational and subject to memory and recency constraint using finite state controller. So if you see the figure in which is available, so there is a human and robot which are trying to move the table outside the room. And one of the one of the thing with this is like the robot cannot walk backwards, so it is a suboptimal behavior. So what it tries to do is it tries to nudge human to come on the opposite side, so they can walk backward and robot can move in front. But if it sees that human is more adamant, they would give up the behavior and they would go with the suboptimal policy. And another model that tries to uh, get the suboptimality behavior is Bitcoin and others, which tries to model it as a risk aware model. So loss aversion is the property which people have generally, that is for a same amount, people considering losing to be more considerable loss compared to gaining same amount. So basically when there is risk and uncertainty involved, people are more cautious. So if you see from comparing with the noisy rational model, the risk averse model is more uh, tend towards the uh, loss or um, uncertainty. So which can be basically models similar to noisy rational model with an extra factor into it. So going to the second order mental model. So second order mental model is pretty much same as the first order mental model, but it is one step deeper than in behavior modeling. That is a robot forming a belief over humans model of the robot. So it is kind of recursive kind of a thinking where I believe that you believe that I believe kind of thinking. And it's one of the popular cultural reference is from the friends, if you've seen this episode. So, Second order mental model basically gives more predictable and explicable behavior because we are trying to act according to the belief of the human. So how do we infer the second order mental model? So one of the approach or basically in this, we are trying to infer the human's model of the robot model. So the approach basically is you're trying to find how human is modeling or judging the human uh, robot behavior. So one of the approach, this is from the Iron Lab, looks into using interactive POMDPs. So IPOMDPs is same as traditional POMDPs with the notion of interactive states, which lets you have the multiple agents instead of a single agent. 
So their approach basically had two steps. First, you use inverse reinforcement learning to get human's Q function. And then once you have the Q function, the Q function basically gives the idea of a particular state, what is the optimal action which human needs to take. Uh, you assume a Boltzmann rational model to get the human's belief about the agent. So I've been for now talking about the, how we can model the human behavior. Now, what do we do with this modeling? So how do we create this uh, shared awareness using the human mental model? So in this section, I'll be talking about how can we leverage explainable AI to create the shared awareness or shared mental model between the teams. So before diving into that, I just wanted to give a brief overview of what explainable AI is. So, XAI got its popularity from DARPA's XAI initiative, which was started because AI and ML was getting pretty efficient, but also incomprehensible to the user. So XAI, as defined by Hoffman and others, uh, uh, try to satisfy three purposes. That is, how does the AI work? What mistakes can AI make? And why did the AI just do that? Uh, going into the application or the benefits of explainable AI, first, it helps in establishing trust in the model because we are able to determine what is happening inside it. Second, some of the industries required explanation as uh, regulatory compliance. And third, it helps in uh, facilitating model validation and debugging. So the example on the right, so we had they had this classifier which was used to classify Husky versus Wolf. And it has a pretty good efficiency of 90 plus percent. But when they ran an XAI algorithm, that is a Lyme algorithm, they found that that was not a Husky versus Wolf classifier. It was just a snow classifier. Basically, it was looking at the background and trying to see whether it has snow or not. So this is an example how XAI can be used for model validation and debugging. Another thing which can, which is uh, helpful for XAI is accountability and biases. So if you have any biases within your data or model, uh, XAI helps you to create an accountability and fairness within that. Going into little detail is like people, whenever they talk about XAI, so they try to interchangeably use explainability and explanation. So the major difference between the interpretability is, interpretability is the property of the model. That is, whenever it's trying to make a decision, it takes into account that it is explainable to the person who is going to look into it. For example, the traditional interpretable models are linear regression, shallow decision tree, and if else statements. So if someone looks into these models, they can easily understand how did the model come to a particular decision. Explanations on the other side are explicitly explaining decisions to people. So for example, if you have a classifier, which is trying to classify whether the image is dog or a cat, the explanation, first of all, has to be faithful to the model that is the classifier. And the explanation should be understandable to the user, which it is trying to explain. Giving the example of the each scenario. So model explainability can be looked as a model which can be simulated. You, know, you can have some provenness model towards it, or you can decompose into its individual components like a features or weights or certain uh, visualization as such. And then you have the transparency of the algorithm. Whereas on the explanation side, you have two things which you need to be looking into. First is the types of explanation. One is full or exhaustive explanation, basically giving the explanation of the whole model. Then you have local explanation or the approximation for a particular scenario, and you have case-based explanation. For example, of case-based is like, for example, if you ask a classifier, why did you classify a particular image as cat? It will give uh, examples of the images, which says, oh, whenever I see these images, I will classify it as a cat. The different modalities can be used to ex uh, explain this explanation. So few modalities are behavioral explanations, visualization and interactive interfaces, and verbal explanation. Going into a little bit details in ex modalities of explanation HRI. So one of the modality is behavioral explanation. So this is a work by Dragan and others, which looks into the legibility behavior and predictability behavior. Basically, it tries to convey the goal of the robot or the next action of the robot to, for the person who is trying to watch it. Other is a visual behavior. So one of the visual uh, aspect of it, right? Like for example, in this example, we have a image which has been classified as frog. So an explanation in this case would look like a features which the classifier is looking into that leads to the decision that this image is frog. 
some of the recent models which are looked into is AR and VR. So work, this is a work by Matt, Connor, and Carl that lets you visualize the constraints placed on the motion planner. Users have the ability to edit this constraint and revisualize the new plan. And there are semantics explanation that my work usually focus on semantic side. It looks into the generation of semantic feedback that lets you improve the human understanding of the world. So going to a certain examples of behavioral explanations. So I have talked about inter uh, legibility, predictability, and explicability. So the legible behavior is a behavior in which you are able to infer the goal of the robot. So for example, if you see in the leftmost image, you have an arm trying to reach towards the green ball, but it is striking an R way. So when you see a robot doing something like that, you can easily guess that it is going for a green ball. Whereas in the middle figure, you can see there is a predictable behavior, basically, which is trying to give the next action a robot robot is trying to take. So if it is going directly straight towards the green ball, you know what will be the next action. Whereas explicit uh, explicability is a way of acting in a way that makes sense to the user. That is, if you have a human model and robot model, and if robot acts according to the robot model, which is different from the human model, it would be a surprising behavior for a robot, uh, sorry, human. But if a human robot acts according to the human model, it would be an exp uh, uh, explicable behavior that makes sense and it is also predictable. With this, I would like to like to lead to my third part of the presentation, which basically looks into semantic explanation in general and what are the trends and criticism of current XAI research and the insights from uh, social science and HRI to effectively communicate this information back to the human. So first, looking towards the semantic explanation. So first thing, when human observes something inexplicable and tries to carry the robot, robot needs to convert its knowledge into something that is useful to the convey. It cannot convey back the state which it has because it's totally obscure and it is very ununderstandable to the human. So robot needs to convert this into something more human, intelligible and comprehensible. So this is the work by Brad, which looks into how to give a response to the query. So in this, whenever human queries a robot, like for example, if human queries, like why did you inspect the part? It tries to map that into a query template to determine the action which is being queried. So once you have the action, the uh, action is mapped into the states which are likely getting activated. And those states are mapped to the regions which are going to be used. For example, in the third image, you can see the regions are stock fade on on part detected. Uh, once we find those concept mappings, uh, mappings, we try to minimize it using a set core problem of Boolean logic expression to get the natural language as the output. So the output would look like I inspect a part when the stock feed is on and I detect a part. Another approach is like, how do we generate rationals? So this is a work by Ahsan and others, which looks into how we can use humans as a heuristics to learn the rationals. Rationals or justifications explain why a decision is good, but does not necessarily aim to give the explanation of actual decision process. So in this case, if the human asks, why, well, please explain your action. So this is a domain which is called Frogger domain from arcade games. So it basically says, I'm, move, I'm moving left to stay behind the blue truck. So how did they generate this? So they had like a two-step process where basically they collected a corpus of data from the players who explained their action in the game environment and use this corpus of data to train encoder decoder network to generate a plausible rationals for any action taken by the agent. So going into the current trends within the XAI is like generally in XAI, the major focus is towards generating the explanations which are focused towards the expert user. That is, how does the weights of the neural network affect the classification and search and which is very much focused on the visual side of the domain. So the good thing about this is like they are useful for debugging and predicting model behavior in a restricted domain and they're good for pedagogical learning. The problem with this is like they face difficulty with generalizability and they have a potential to mislead unless the domain and epistemic limitations are known. So 
there is a shift within the field to look towards social science and cognitive science to understand how explanations are used by people. Specifically, focus is towards the usage of explanation that are helpful to novices, such that these explanations can be both useful for novices and the experts. So one of the work by Majo de Graaf and Petra Male looks into uh, how people explain and which can be used inside. So one of the things which they argue is people assign human-like traits to artificial agents. People will expect explanation using the same conceptual framework used by the used to explain human behavior. They further argue that adding biases and social expectation can improve the human interaction. And another big insight comes from this survey paper by Tim Miller, which looks into philosophy and cognitive science. They argue that people use contrastive, selective, and social explanation in everyday life. Going into the details of it, so explanations are sought in response or generally sought in response to counterfactual cases. That is, people do not ask why a particular event B happened, but rather they had an expectation that Q would be happening, but it did not happen and P happened. So we should be generating an explanation in contrast with that. Selective explanations are the explanation basically where people do not want the full causal chain for why a particular event happened. They want a very selective information within that causal chain which they expect. So for a particular event, there might be a mal valid multiple explanation. For example, in this case, why did the glass break? It can be because there is a gravity which pulled down the glass down. It might be because marble floor was harder than the glass. In this case, human is looking at there was a cat which knocked off the glass and this reason it broke. Third is explanations are considered to be social, that is like explanations are interactive, that information is tailored according to recipient's belief and level of expertise. And explanations are discursive and iterative, that is it should not be a one way in exchange of information, more like argument and you should expect some sort of disagreement with the people which you're talking with. With this, I would like to summarize what kind of explanation people prefer are generally similar to human explanation that are contrastive, selective, and socially constructed. So with this, uh, I would like to move on to my focus paper, which looks into how mental models can be used to generate explanation. So this paper is by Takagata and others from ASU, which is plan explanation as model reconciliation, moving beyond, moving beyond explanation as solitude. So first, why am I going detail into this paper? So this is the first work that tries to incorporate mental models for generating explanations for people. It also defines this model reconciliation problem. I'll be talking more about it in the next slide and also demonstrates the challenges present in generating plan explanation during human robot interaction. So before we deep dive into it, uh, this paper is heavily based on PDDL. So I just wanted to give a brief overview of what PDDL is, that is planning domain definition language, which is based on Streps planning uh, language given by McDormand. So a PDDL basically consists of objects, things in the world that interest us, Predicates, these are the Boolean classifier which, are, which we are interested in that can be true or false. Initial state, the state of the world that we uh, start in. Goal specifications, things that we want to be true and actions or the ways of the ways of changing the state of the world. Going into a little bit of actions, how the actions are specified. So you will have a description of an action. You will have certain precondition that needs to be satisfied for an action to happen. And there is an effect. So for example, if the description is robot has to move from X to Y. So you will have a precondition that location one X, location two Y would be true and robot is at X true. And when it moves to the Y, location at Y becomes true and robot at X becomes false. Going into the domain representation, so you have a model which is represented by D, I, G, where D is, has F and A. F is a finite set of fluent that defines the world state, and A is finite set of action. I and G are initial and goal states. A is a set of tuple which consists of cost for taking that action, precondition for it, positive effect, and negative effect. Then you have a solution to the planning problem given by pi, which is a sequence of actions. 
and the cost for that particular pi uh, plan is given by C and pi star and C star is the optimal plan and respective cost. So going into what is model reconciliation problem. So MRP states that we need to do minimal changes to human models to bring it closer to the mod uh, robots model such that the plan is optimal with respect to the new human model. Let's see how we can turn this into mathematical. So mathematically, MRP can be defined into a tuple that is basically you have an optimal plan, pi star, robot model MR, human model MH. So the idea is like initially the expected plan cost by the human is higher than the expected plan cost by the robot. But when we generate an explanation, we want the new model updated by the explanation makes the expected plan cost by the human equal to the expected plan cost by the robot, such that the plan becomes uh, explicable and predictable to the human who is observing it. To ground it in an example, so we have this fetch scenario. So in the fetch scenario, there is one caveat. So the, in this scenario, the fetch robot is moving from location one to location two. So it picks up an object at location one, moves to the location two and drops the object. And when it moves from location A to B, it has to uh, tuck its arm and lower its torso before moving because uh, this is a unique characteristic of fetch because it gives a balance. But if it is not doing that, it would lead to unbalanced base and top leg, which is not so evident to human and it has to be reconciled with it. So going into the PDDL of the robots plan, so we can see there is a precondition for an action move that is robots hand need to be tucked and it need to be crouched. And so optimal plan for a robot in this case involves tuck action followed by move. The whole plan would be like pick up an object, tuck, move to the location to put down the object. Oh, okay, one thing. So one of the things you can notice on the red highlight sorry green highlight is the tuck action also has an added effect of crotch which is also something which would not be so evident to the human so if you compare this with human speed ddl so we can see there is a difference in expectations so first difference is it does not have a precondition of hand crotch or hand tuck and second tuck action does not have an added effect of crouching down. So one of the possible way which we can reconcile the difference is generating an explanation that says moving location one to location two has a precondition hand tucked. So this kind of explanation is called multi-model explanation. Before we go into the detail of generating, so what are the characteristics of explanation which we can look into? First is completeness criteria. So explanations of a plan should be able to compare and contrast it against other alternatives so that no better solution exists. Second is conciseness, such that the explanation should be as concise as possible so that they are easily understandable to the explainer. Third is the monotonicity. That is, this ensures that the remaining model difference cannot subsume, or sorry, cannot change the completeness of the explanation. So basically it subsumes and completeness criteria and requires more data. Third, we have computability. That is, it measures the ease of computing the explanation from point of view of the explainer. Uh, to give more clarification between completeness and monotonicity is the idea of completeness basically is withholding information on other model changes as we observe certain things so basically the idea is so this is very thing which we notice when we talk with people like we don't try to explain the whole thing we only try to explain things which seems relevant at that point so when we are teaching physics based on the level of the person we teach them the appropriate knowledge so that is the basic idea of the completeness whereas monotonicity basically looks at the whole model and try to come up with an explanation such that further explanation would not change the model at all Okay, so going into generate process of generating different explanations. So one of the process is called plan patch explanation. So this is one of the simplest way of doing it. What we are trying to do is to just get explain the actions which are different in human model and robot model. So basically whatever the difference of action which we see from human and robot point of view. So these are very easy to compute, concise and plan. Problem with that, it, unnecessary plan information might be revealed and does not target the explainability of the model difference because we are just explaining the actions which are different in the models. Second is model patch explanation. 
that provides the entire model difference between human and robot. So it is easy to get because it's just a difference, but it can be quite large, incomprehensible to the user and difficult to compute because the way it has been set up. So what we can do is we can use the characteristics which we just talked about to minimize the size and increase the comprehensibility. So there is a trade-off based on which characteristic which we, we go with. So first of that is we can use the completeness criteria to get the shortest complete explanation. So one of the example of uh, shortest explanation that is MCE can be for the fetch scenario is moving location one to two has precondition hand -tucked. Second is minimal monotonic explanation, which uses the completeness criteria along with monotonicity criteria. So in this case, it tries to reconcile the both difference which we see. So basically it adds the effect of clutch along with the precondition which has before moving from location one to location two. Okay, let's get into the algorithm to generate this behavior. So the intuition is that we are trying to do a model search that is moving a model from left towards the right that is closer towards the robot model. So we have human model on the left and we want it to get to the closer to the uh, robot model. So we have this initial model M1 and we want to get to M2. We have this F and Lambda, which provides states and model ac action changes that can be made to the model such that the solution looks like a set of edit function, lambda i, that can transform m1 to m2. So if we change this lambda to explanation, it would turn into our model reconciliation problem where you have initial model of human and updated model of the human such that the new cost which human is observing is lesser than the previous cost. So this is basically the idea behind the algorithm going into the details of the algorithm so we have input and output so input is model reconciliation problem tuple and the output is the explanation in this case it is an mce explanation first we initialize variables such as priority queue for doing a a star search close list to track the explanation optimal plan by the robot and expected plan by the human then we have the so within the main loop consists of two major steps so first step is it iteratively tried to find something which is missing uh, something which needs to be removed from the human's model and tries to find an explanation that removes that belief from the human so for example if you want to remove the crouch effect from the tuck action so the explanation can be uh, tuck has no add effect crouch Second part of it, it looks into something reverse of that. So it's basically it tries to find something which needs to be added to the human model and finds an explanation that does it. So, for example, in this case, a tuck has an add effect crotch and it basically adds that effect back in. And we do this iteratively till the exit condition is satisfied. That is, a plan is optimal in new human model. Similarly, MME is performed. The difference between MME and MCE is like in MCE, we start from the human model and that is from the left-hand side and we keep on adding till the stopping criteria is satisfied. That is the plan is optimal in human model. Whereas in MME, we start from the robot model and try to go towards the human model till the criteria is, uh, criteria is satisfied such that further adding of explanation will not change the model at all going into the evaluation so they tested three different they tested the methods for three domains so they had three domains one was blocks world domain rover domain and logistic domain so what they found was there were gains in time seen if the heuristic and opera, uh, approximations are used. And they found that MME search is costlier than MC, which kind of makes sense. Also, they found that both MC and MME search are significantly smaller than the total model difference because we're trying to find only things which we are relevant to us. Furthermore, they tried to evaluate how the algorithm performs with domain size. So they saw that exponential increase in time with the model difference as model difference increases. This can become problematic with modest model difference. This highlights an important uh, importance of finding useful approximations for to the explanation generating problem. So 
to summarize some of the key challenges and limitation of this work and what we can we do to improve it. So one of the things which they had was they assumed the human model is available and it is available to the planet. So this is one of the major challenge which we have when we are working in human robot interaction is getting the human model and using it is very difficult. Second, they assume human and robots model to be homogeneous and in the same level of abstraction. So in this case, human model and robot model both was in PDDL format. So it was easier for them to reconcile it. But when we have a different model, it becomes an altogether, altogether different problem. Third is, as we have seen, that uh, computational complexity of the algorithm scales exponentially with modest increase in size, making it difficult for wider use. And they also assume that human always agrees with the explanation, which may not be the case. So we need to have some sort of alternative mechanism, which we can do or have some sort of negotiation mechanism, which we can uh, look into. Furthermore, uh, explanations are currently optimizing to reveal the ground truth or to be precise. So if we try to relax this assumption, we can generate an ex alternative explanations, which uh, will not be exactly true, but will be more computationally feasible because we are reducing the space of the search. With this, uh, I would like to move to my current work and what I'm planning to do. So as I initially mentioned, I'm looking into this three question, like how do we turn a capable robot into competent instruction? So the three major question which I had was like, how can robot use to figure out humans uh, worldview, given this understanding, how can they issue the corrective guidance and what information or the how information can be effectively communicated back. So the first work I looked into it was basically trying to come up with a framework that tries to incorporate all of this. So the first work is what is called reward augmentation and repair through explanation, which is called as rare. The intuition of rare, which uses the principle of rationality is this that consider the simple grid world example with two terminal reward. We expect a knowledgeable, rational human to go up, up towards the right, towards the bigger reward. However, if we see someone doing something like up and left, then we can assume that they don't know about the big reward and their world model is incomplete. So the problem which I was looking into solve was to tell people about the inaccuracies of their reward function and utility function. And that's how, why the reason I came up with this framework of reward augmentation and repair through explanation. Going into the detail of how rare works. So for example, we, are, we start observing the human. So for example, in this case, the human starts in the starting position. We do not have any idea about their belief. We see him take a step. This was not an informative st step. We did not have much, means we got an update, but it was not informative enough. Then as soon as we see a human taking left, we can safely assume that they're going towards 10 and we need to communicate this missing reward from their belief before the task is completed. So one of the way which we can update this belief is by telling the suboptimality of the action, basically telling them that they're doing something wrong which would encourage to reflect them to find an alternative policy, which would lead them to hopefully to a positive goal. Second approach is justifying it. So justify the advice by providing the location of the reward. So basically we tell them that if you don't do that, you won't get the best reward. There is a better reward in the top right corner. So what with this basically does is it forces their planner towards a particular direction, hopefully finding the goal faster. So by doing this, we could take what would have been a suboptimal behavior by the human and augmenting the reward function, we push them towards a better direction. So we wanted to check the effectiveness of our reward coaching and importance of justification. So we came up with this incredibly frustrating game to make people play with robot. We took Sudoku and we made it more, even more difficult in the collaborative setting. So here's what we did in our modified Sudoku, which we call real-time color Sudoku, a really hard game for humans. So human is sitting opposite to the robot. It is a six cross six grid with six different colors of block. And you are filling from the bottom three rows and robot is filling from top three rows. Each player is going from right to left, nearest to farthest. And there are no turns, play whenever you want. You can imagine this game being difficult because the rules of the game include the constraint which you have to satisfy while playing this game. 
So we had two constraints we placed on the people while playing. That is, no color can appear twice on the row and no color could border itself, which means early moves have long-term consequences. So people have to be very careful about their moves. We ran between subject uh, experiment and had three uh, test conditions. So first was control condition where a robot would stop them before a wrong move and tell them that it is a wrong move. And second, it was a justification condition. It would tell them about the missing reward. In this case, we can map to the constraint which they are going to violate. And third was an implicit condition where people did not do any mistake and there was no interaction between human and robot. So we had three subjective hypotheses we evaluated. So one, people will find robot to be more useful in justification condition. Second, people will find robot to be more intelligent when just give, when a robot provides the justification. Third, they would perceive robot to be more social. We were able to show with the statistical significance that justification makes robot more useful and intelligent, and we did not have enough evidence for the social hypothesis. So we had one objective hypothesis going into this. We anticipated that people would complete the game faster when given the reward justification. Uh, because it simplifies their planning problem. We were really excited and confident about this one, but we couldn't test it. We couldn't test it because of an interesting reason, because most people didn't listen to control conditions advice without justification, which is incredibly frustrating when I was doing this. And when we looked at the game completion rate, we found that only 20% of the participants were able to complete the game because rest ignored the robot's advice and failed the game. In the justification condition, however, 20% of the people failed the game. And when we asked them about why did they not listen to the robot's advice, so one of them said that they didn't hear robot because they were too involved when completing the game. So they did not hear what robot was talking. And another just said like, oh, they did not believe the briefing which we gave. They thought robot is basically being competitive and we are being deceptive. Uh, with this, I would like to give certain limitations of the, this work. So one is rare repairs single reward at a time, which can be time consuming and tedious for a human collaborator. User preference is not accounted when we are trying to plan. Third is we prove justification is important when collaborating, but we do not know why or what level of abstraction should be used when we are trying to justify an action. Furthermore, uh, can we relax this assumption that justification has always to be true? Can Will people blindly trust the justification or will they try to verify the justification given by the robot? So with this, I would like to talk about some of the work which I'm doing right now. So this is one of the projects which I'm doing with Matt, which is for, uh, for an army grant, which looks into creating this shared notion of uncertainty and awareness within the avalanche rescue domain. So here we have multiple drones looking for victims during the rescue. And the idea is how can they help the operator, the person who is trying to rescue the people, uh, get to the goal as fast as possible. So the main thing which we are looking at is how can they communicate this information back to the human and create the shared awareness between the human and the robots which they are trying to search. So the major question which I'm looking to answer here is how can we use uh, contrastive explanations along with justification for creating trust and situational awareness amongst the teammates? And also I'm looking when and we are what modality should this information be communicated back to the humans with such that it would minimize the load and maximize the performance. So some of the approach which I'm looking into is first coming up with an information theoretical framework that would determine the uh, information content of the communicative update. Furthermore, I'm also designing the user studies that uh, evaluates the effectiveness of multiple modalities, specifically AR, visual, and semantic modalities for communicating the information updates. With this, uh, I would like to summarize the, some of the things or questions which I'm looking for in the future to solve is, how can we use contrast to explanation combined with justification for more situational awareness? During failure mitigation scenarios, what type of information and modality provides more situational awareness to mitigate failures? And what are the practical and ethical side of policy elicitation using alternative explanation that is by relaxing the exactness of information criteria?
And with this, I would like to end my presentation and thank everyone for listening to me.